Good morning and welcome to our service this morning on the 29th of March 2020, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Today we're going to share in worship together, in prayer and in thinking through something from our scripture. I'm also going to, as we go through the service, suggest some suitable hymns that you might want to find on YouTube and play or that you might want to listen to later on. Let's begin our worship this morning. I'm going to suggest if you'd like to begin with a hymn that you might look up Be Thou My Vision and listen and sing along to that. And then when you've done that, we can begin our worship together. Feel free to pause this video at any time to listen to a hymn that you would like to. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. going to pray for us all a prayer of confession. I use resources from uh, a Bible publisher called Roots and this prayer comes from their suggested prayers for today. So let us pray. Lord, forgive us when we don't always trust you, when we don't always trust that you know best. Forgive us when we think our timing is better than yours, when we think that we know best. Forgive us when we demand things from you, when we want everything now and stamp our feet when we don't get it. Forgive us when we turn away from you, when we feel let down and hurt, thinking that you have rejected us and abandoned us. For you never reject us or abandon us. Forgive us, Lord, and give us renewed hope. Let's say that line together. Forgive us, Lord, and give us renewed hope. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to pray the collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. There are three Bible readings set for today. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. If you want to note that down in case you'd like to go and read it, that's Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14. That's the Old Testament reading for today. The New Testament reading for today is from Romans chapter 8. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. I'm not going to read both of those readings to you now because I think you'll get tired of the sound of my voice. If you've got people with you at home, perhaps you could take it in turns to share one of those readings with each other. So you can pause me and read those readings together and then come back and join me again when you've done that if you'd like to. If you'd like to listen to or sing a hymn, you could sing or listen to Breathe On Me, Breath of God. And then when you come back, I will read our Gospel reading. Our Gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. It's quite a long reading. And normally we stand for the gospel in church, but this is quite long, so if you want to sit down, I think that would be a good idea. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village 
of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus said to them, <laughs> sorry, Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was re merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she'd said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up and go quickly out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. 
Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet were bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who'd come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder what today's readings have caused you to think about. For me it was the age-old question, how is God or how is Jesus present for us when it seems like everything is going wrong? Especially relevant to our current situation, I suppose. But it's a question that is perpetually asked throughout the narrative of Scripture. In Ezekiel, if you took time to read the Ezekiel Old Testament lesson, after the fall of Jerusalem, when Israel is at its lowest point, the word of the Lord brings hope to the entire nation. And Paul, too, in that letter that we just read, the letter to the Romans, Paul encourages the Romans to seek the Spirit of God within themselves. We're very concerned at present with our worldly flesh and what's happening to each of us. But Paul's encouragement is to seek Christ within us. To set the mind on the Spirit, he says, is life and peace. But what of Lazarus? I wonder if we can read the story of the raising of Lazarus as if it were a parable for us when we want to know where Jesus is when it seems as though life is falling apart. Because maybe it is an account that can help us to realise that Jesus is present even if he seems absent. It's not as if he ignores the message that Lazarus is ill. He doesn't need to leave straight away. Perhaps he doesn't feel he needs to. And yet even though there is a risk in him travelling so close to Jerusalem, he does determine to go. And when he's there, he not only reaches to comfort his friends, but reverses the death that Lazarus has died and brings about a resurrection that points to his own. If Jesus brings life in these circumstances, how much more can the crucified and exalted Lord be able to be the grounding of our hope, our hope, in the face of every anxiety and the variety of every challenge? I was thinking about what comforts us. Jesus goes to comfort his friends and then performs a miracle. But I was thinking about those little daily miracles, those things that comfort us. Maybe we have a favourite teddy that brings us comfort. Maybe we are comforted when somebody sends us a nice card. Maybe a fluffy pair of socks keeps our feet warm and makes us feel comforted. Maybe it's a phone call from a friend or a relative. Maybe it's a box of chocolates. We turn to all sorts of things for our comfort, don't we? I wonder if you have a Bible passage that you turn to when you are feeling anxious. A non-practicing Christian friend of mine said that she has been singing The Lord's My Shepherd to herself to help her get to sleep in these slightly anxious times. I wonder what practices you have if you're with other people watching this, pause the video and have a chat or have a think about what things you turn to for comfort. Jesus didn't panic and rush to be with his friends. 
he remained calm and travelled carefully and was still able to work that miracle and bring great comfort. Maybe we can learn that being a calm presence can bring a sense of peace to others. Maybe we can find the peace that we need in scripture, in Jesus. May we all remember today that Jesus is our ever-present comfort when we are troubled or fearful. Amen. At this point in a service we would normally stand and recite the creed or similar together. I thought one thing that we could do remotely as it were is reaffirm our baptismal vows. So we're going to affirm our faith in that way and your response is simply I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you wanted to stop and listen to a hymn or sing a hymn at the moment, an appropriate hymn to sit or to, to listen to or join in with might be Father, hear the prayer we offer. So we come to our prayers of intercession. When I say, Lord, hear our prayer, your response, if you want to join in, is Lord, weep with us and bring us fresh hope. So when I say, Lord, hear our prayer, you can respond, Lord, weep with us and bring us fresh hope. Let us pray. We pray for all who weep today, for those who grieve and mourn for the loss of loved ones. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, weep with us and bring us hope. We pray for those who care for people, especially at this time. For chaplains and hospice workers, for nurses, doctors, carers, pastors, undertakers, all those who are looking after relatives and neighbours. Lord, give them courage, strength, empathy and love as they walk with those who struggle and those who weep. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, weep with us and bring fresh hope. We pray today, Lord, for broken relationships or situations where there seems to be no hope. For communities destroyed by death, by poverty, by war, by violence or by abuse for families who are separated from one another at this time. We pray for those who feel let down by society and for those who feel let down by you. May all know your presence in these dark times. As we wait on you, Lord, comfort us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, weep with us and bring fresh hope. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The last time we gathered in church, we weren't really able to share the peace. I'm going to share the peace with you now, and you can share it with those members of your household. Blessed are all those who seek after and make peace. They shall be called children of God. We pray in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. If you've been pausing the video to listen to a hymn, my final hymn suggestion today is Come Down, O Love Divine, where we reflect on the divine love that God has for us and for the whole creation and know that he is present with us in every situation. And as I would usually do, I'm going to give a final blessing. As we wait on you, Lord God, renew our strength, our hope and our vision that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and for whom you pray, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.